Okay, so evening guys, you're joining me on a Wednesday evening here. I've got the 740 in the garage. Let me run you through why it's in. It's been here for a bit two weeks now. And as you can see, the engine bay is in a partial state of disassembly. Most of the cooling system is missing. Um, it's sitting over on that table. And I'll run you through the reason why. So this is of course the N62 V8. Um, it's getting a lot of coverage on YouTube at the moment for various reasons. I still maintain it's a great reliable engine once a few core issues are sorted out but i suppose um what directly contradicts that is an ongoing issue i have with it so i suppose about five years ago i had a very annoying coolant leak and it seems i have the same coolant leak again and the, the way we fixed it five years ago what the leak basically was if you can imagine your water pump sits on here and anyone that knows these engines knows that there's a not a catastrophic failure but basically the coolant transfer pipe which basically goes from here all the way to the back of the engine it's a long hollow tube and there's an o-ring on the front and an o-ring on the back and typically the o-ring on the front fails and it allows coolant to enter into the valley and it can leak out this weep hole which you can just about see that's it there and it only does it under certain conditions. So when the engine's running, in my experience, it doesn't leak out that hole. It's only when you turn the engine off after you know a good hot run. About 10 minutes after the engine's off, it slowly trickles out here. Now, this has gotten so bad, it, it basically gets worse and worse over time that I lose about half a liter of coolant every two or three days. So it, it's pretty bad. Now, the frustrating thing is, we put in the Bimmer pipe solution, which is a collapsible kind of telescopic pipe. Um, that allows you to basically cut out the old pipe, install the telescopic one, replace the O-ring uh, without taking the whole engine apart. Otherwise, if you put in the original BMW one, it's a solid pipe and you basically have to take half the engine apart to do that. So now what I put in is a good solid solution. I had my local mechanics do it and they did a good job, but it seems I'm back to square one with the same leak. Now, the thing is, I haven't fully identified it as being the same issue. It just has the same symptoms. Uh, it's gradually got worse over time. It, I can't see it leaking when the engine is running, and it only seems to do it um, after the engine's been switched off. Now, five years ago, I witnessed it leaking, and this time around, I haven't witnessed it leaking. I've had it in here under various conditions, kept an eye on it, come back out to the car at various times. Not once have I seen it leak. Now, you can actually see... Well, in fairness, I've drained the whole cooling system, so that's why the base of the engine is all wet there. But basically, that's what I was looking at for weeks and weeks and months and months. Um, so, what am I doing? So, the irony is, I basically bought a solution online to basically an alternate solution to a new cooling pipe. And in the process of taking the cooling system apart, it crumbled on me. And I'm wondering if this was my issue. So, see this coolant hose here? It's a very complicated coolant hose, and this is the smaller piece that actually connects into it, and that just fell apart in my hands. So I'm just wondering if that was actually the cause of it. And then as soon as I found this, I was kind of like, hmm, will I even bother with the fix for this and just replace the cooling system, see how I get on? And then I was like, you know what? I have the whole thing apart. I'm replacing everything anyway. Oh, there goes my light. I might as well just do the proper solution. So let me run through what I have basically purchased over here. So this is the Bimmer Fix solution. And what the kit essentially is, is this stent. So if you ignore everything else in the kit, you've obviously got this coolant sealer here and you basically smother your stent here in that sealer and you pop it in here. So this is obviously again where the water pump goes. This directly connects with the coolant pipe. It seals this whole area. Um, and it doesn't, you, you leave the original O-ring on your coolant transfer pipe in place and this essentially covers over that entire seal. So that stops it leaking essentially. So it obviously it stops you from having to take the whole engine apart and it's a cleaner solution from that point of view. Um, now I let the guys know in Bimmerfix that I have a non-original coolant pipe. So they asked me to take a few measurements here and they've custom made me this stent. So this perfectly fits inside as you can see, it's a nice tight fit. There's no wobble at all. Um, and that should seal up that joint nicely. Uh, you get a few bits in the kit. Now I fully bought this kit myself. This wasn't uh, uh, gifted to me. Um, and it's a bloody expensive kit. It's $250, which is kind of crazy when you consider what's in it. I understand it's a very innovative, pro innovative product. Um, 
and that's obviously contributes partially to the price and considering the alternative taking the engine apart uh, the coolant transfer pipes are a lot more money you can see why it's kind of priced the way that it is so my plan is to just stick this in anyway if it turns out it's not the coolant pipe like i suppose i'll never know um, if it's not the coolant pipe this is kind of like secondary insurance for that and i'm going to replace everything in the cooling system so just to touch on that i have radiator hose that's lower radiator hose one of the most complicated uh, upper radiator hoses you'll ever see there's three or four different connections coming off that i have a new expansion bottle and there's two other coolant hoses here as well one goes across the top of the radiator and then i have another one that comes from the actual uh, coolant bottle itself i have new sensors new uh, radiator cap itself and my water pump is only about five years old there's only about 25 30 000 miles on that it's absolutely fine that's going straight back in my pulleys are good my radiator was only done less than a year ago um, so all of that's fine it's going to be essentially an all-new cooling system bar the water pump which i suppose has a few years on it but it's absolutely fine while i have everything apart now you might be wondering why on earth is you replacing the alternator you know what it's 17 years old i don't want to have it i don't want to have it leave me stranded on the side of the road essentially so this is the original vallejo unit is just bmw stamped but it's a, a vallejo unit and as you can see and i'm after getting a replacement from my local parts supplier so unfortunately they don't they don't have a core exchange system so i had to pay full whack for this it was 370 quid and you can basically get a brand new one online for in around 250 to 270 or so so i paid a bit more for this but if anyone's interested in this let me know and we'll work something out so makes sense to have this i can't wait to get it all in it'd be great to have the, i suppose the reassurance that my alternator is all new all new cooling system and hopefully this leak will be sorted too so i'm probably going to start with the stent because you essentially need 24 hours for this gasket sealer to harden up and do its thing so we can get our alternator back in then and all our coolant parts so let's get started now the first thing that we want to do is just inspect this cast mark which you can just about see on the lens this can vary from vehicle to vehicle and it's just that it's a mark left over from the casting process and if this is a large bump you basically need to sand it away and um, there's a tiny little lip on it there so i'm going to use the included sanding rod which is basically a bit of wood with uh, sanding paper around the, the outside of it and we're going to sand that down it also roughens up the surface and gives uh, the stent hopefully the best chance of sealing with the sealer and already i can feel nothing I think my the bump on mine was very very slight i'm just going to roughen it up a little bit more next step is to stick in our roller our cleaner here and just give it a good spin around i have some brake parts cleaner on here which is what's recommended to be used i presume you could just use regular degreaser as well if you wanted and yeah there's a, a small bit of residue on that And that next step is to basically get this sealer and you want to stick it on your fingertip basically and run it around the inside of the front cover and you're basically covering the entire old seal and then we want to basically cake our stent in the same material and pop it in so let's give this a go it might get quite messy i'm going to do one last drying of this area there should be absolutely no coolant in it and as instructed in the manual, it's best to lift the car up a bit so all the coolant goes backwards. There's actually moisture on my hand, so there's nothing at all on this now. And I'm basically feeling for the actual ledge where I can feel the very front of the coolant pipe. And I'm basically filling that whole seal, or sorry, that whole ledge with the sealer. top bottom left and right right I've been at this five minutes now okay and full disclosure this is my honest opinion of this after just a few minutes this step I mean this is just a pure mess trying to get this sealant 
to seal between the cover and the pipe is nigh on impossible. You're doing this essentially completely blind. Maybe if you had the whole engine disassembled and it's sitting on a table in front of you, like in the guy's videos, trying to do this like this and trying to get a seal. Every time I look down in here, I shine the flashlight in and look in, it's not a perfect seal at all against the front of the pipe. All you can do is your very best. Every time you drag your finger back out again, you just take a lump of sealant with you. I've used the brush. The brush is even messier because you take the brush out and it takes a load of the material with it. <sighs> I really hope that the sealant on this does its job once it's planted in because that sealant's doing nothing. Um, that might contribute 10% to the seal and this does the rest. I really hope that's the case because there's absolutely no way you can accurately get this sealant in there. And as you can see, this is an incredibly messy process. Quite disappointed with this step, to be honest with you. But let's see how we get on with this. Last bit goes on. I can imagine there's going to be a fair bit of excess that squeezes out, which I suppose this is exactly what we want. So that's about as thick as I'm willing to put on, to be honest. Okay. Let's slide this in. So it is actually going in nice and tight which I suppose goes to show that I've applied a lot of sealant to it and sliding in. So for all my giving out there at the start, it seems the sealant on the actual stent itself is what you're doing. As you can see, it's been pushed out there at the top as well. That's definitely what you need to make the proper seal. Putting the sealant in first, I suppose, does very, very little. I suppose it's better than nothing, but it definitely doesn't make the main seal. And this is what you want to check for, putting a flat object across the two, and it should be nice and smooth, because otherwise this can actually impede the back of the water pump, which you definitely don't want. Okay, cool. So after a small bit of cleaning, it's done and dusted. And I have to say, I'm pleasantly surprised with how it went. I'm delighted with the fit of it and how clean it is, as you can see. Um, it almost looks like a perfectly machined part for this specific engine. Um, the gas cleaner cleaned up so easily. I was actually quite worried about cleaning away the excess on the inside, but it came off super, super easy. Um, all in all, delighted with that fix. I mean, just delighted with how firm that is in there. Now once that gasket sealer um, actually sets up, um, it should be rock solid. I can't see any moisture getting past that, uh, seeing as I put so much on the actual stent itself. So I'm delighted with that. I have to leave it for 24 hours and then I can get the water pump back on. So I just used the brush to clean it up a bit. That's the wee brush there. And there's nothing else in the kit. I don't believe that I need any more. So yeah, you get the small set of gloves and that's me ready to roll. So. We'll come back to it maybe in 24 hours and see how we get on. Oh, and just another little tidbit of information. Look at this coolant pipe here. Incredibly brittle. Me just lying on this kind of snapped it. Look at that. <laughs> super soft. Super brittle. Yeah. Thank God I have a replacement one of them. Oh, and one more thing. So this vacuum line on the front of the block is perished. It's four mil. So I thought I'd order some four mil hose online because it's quite expensive from BMW. And I thought it was sold by the meter and I ordered four meters of it. This is what I got. I got four lengths of this. Actually, it might've been five meters. Tiny little crankcase breather hoses. <laughs> Absolutely useless. Ah, uh, what a waste of money. But each one of them were like one euro 20, something like that, so. I suppose it was wishful thinking. Actually, while we're waiting for that to dry, we might as well get the alternator in. There is just the two connections on the back, right here, and right here, they're the two terminals, so 
alternator is located right down the bottom corner here of the block. Not the most accessible area, but we have to get it back in. So first thing I'm going to do is get the cables reconnected. And these are our two bolts, one super long bolt and the short one. Short one goes up top, so we'll try and get that one in first and get the bottom one in. It was a lot easier getting that in than I was taking it out. Of course we need to remove this pulley and transfer it to the new alternator. And of course I was missing my T50 bit. So I had to go out and buy a new one. <sighs> of course this is gonna be a nightmare. You couldn't have done it when I was on the car. Okay, it's off. I'm not even gonna describe what I have to do to get that off. So I was just thinking it makes the most sense to remove the throttle body now, whilst I have good access and we can get that coolant line replaced. Now with the throttle body removed, you can really see the buildup of coolant gunk here. We've had a leak here for some time. This T basically provides additional cooling to the right side head and to the left side head. It basically runs across this line here and provides additional cooling. So we've had a leak for some time, maybe in this plastic here, could be any of the connections, I'm not too sure. That connection actually looks good. But regardless, this line here, basically the brand new one, includes the T and it includes this and it includes this. So all I have to do is get these clips off, reinstall it and get new clips back on. So easy enough job and it should clean up this leak for sure. It's definitely not the gasket that's leaking, it's this, you can see the buildup in the residue. So I'd be happy to get this replaced. Let's start with this lower one. And look at that, that T-joint is just after crumbling. I'm crumbling again. This whole cooling system is just falling apart. And now we have the piece that runs to the right side. Okay, there we go. This is how we're looking now. So we have this connection point here and another one in there. So that's where the line ran between the two. We're gonna clean this up a bit and get the new line in. This is it, this is the new line. I went with a Vaco one. I find the quality of this stuff to be very good. So let's see what we got. I'm gonna stick my hose clamps back on and get this area cleaned up. Let's get this pushed in. That's one. And that's number two. The last thing to do is just to get this coolant line routed correctly back up to the expansion tank without cinching any of these hoses. Now, one clean TB going back in. We might as well move on to removing this one now, seeing as the expansion tank's coming out now. And we'll just remove this clip here. And that's one end of the broken hose. The other end of the hose is up here on the expansion bottle. And that should just pull off. I've got one another Vaco hose. This is a lot less brittle. It's a tight space here. That's on nice and tight. Nice one. That's the old hose out. 
And we're just going to transfer our temp sensor to the new one. Clip goes down. And we'll get our sensor plugged back in again. Nice. You guys can't really see it, but there's another hose down here, and this connects the lower cooler, the trans cooler, into the water pump. And again, it's the same kind of system. Pop off the clip, pull off the hose. That's the old hose. And following the same layout, we're going to pop this one back in. I think to give myself slightly better access getting this fan back in, I might as well remove this triple coolant hose here and it connects into the auxiliary water pump down here. So I'll disconnect it, pull it all out and that might give me slightly better access. There we go. So now this isn't connected, this isn't connected and this isn't connected. So the last connection is actually on the radiator here. Bloody hell! Oh, have you ever seen the like? Bloody hell! It's out. Eat. Eat. Here's another angle of this cooler at the bottom. So this is the hose I replaced a few minutes ago. That leads to the water pump. And this is the connection here where that hose was seized on. So I think the O-ring basically binds to the aluminium, and makes it incredibly difficult to get it off. And that's the auxiliary water pump sitting in there. So this triple connection hose basically connects to water pump, cooler down the bottom, and then into the water pump there. So I think I might actually get my fan back in now, and then we can reinstall that hose and replace the bottle, and I'm done. Hey, Bill, look. Hi. Boo. Boo. I forgot how heavy this thing was. It ain't light. Now we can reconnect our intake, which is fairly straightforward. go tighten down our hose clamp and we can pop on our air box cover and this is the last hose clamp <laughs> nearly forgot we've got a single nut here that goes back on that clamps the intake together Now, let's top her up. Let's start her up. It hasn't actually started now in two weeks. So let's see how it goes. That sounds good. Our fan is working. Do we have any leaks? It sounds a lot smoother. I don't know if maybe the, the bearing was gone in the alternator, but it sounds super, super slick. No flickers of coolant anywhere. So you can see the system self bleeding. The coolant level's a bit high at the moment, but it should lower down. Our new alternator is working well. 
no leaks around the water pump. All the hose connections are good. I should add, the only reason this coolant is green is because I had a dye in it, so it is the correct blue coolant. And it's not bleeding away. Let's just check the dash, make sure there's no lights on. Okay, so we had a number plate warning light and we obviously have to set the time and date. I had the battery disconnected with the alternator. So no warnings, nothing on the dash. Delighted. Delighted. I'm gonna to continue to have that run. As you can see, the level's already dropping nicely. I think we can call that a job well done. Alternator's in. We've got a new heater valve in there as well. All new coolant hoses. Absolutely delighted to have all that replaced. Where was the leak coming from? I mean, this line was incredibly brittle. I don't think that was the leak, but it was very much about to fail. The leak could absolutely have been coming from this larger coolant pipe where it meets the smaller pipe. I mean, as soon as I touched it, it just fell apart in my hands. So that could have absolutely have been leaking down towards the bottom. And like I mentioned, at least I have the extra security now of having that stench installed behind the water pump. Worst case, if that O-ring on the transfer pipe fails again, that'll cover that. So, still running away. Uh, anyone who wants a perfectly good alternator for not so much money, let me know. And the car's been off the road for two weeks now, so absolutely delighted to have it back. So, thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the next video.